Hi, and welcome to History Dinner Theater, which is the day that I talk to you about history and you make dinner. And you bring it to my house so I don't have to cook and Wool can take the night off from being my valet. And today, as you might have guessed from the uh, use of La Marseillaise in Piccadilly as the opening sound, we're going to be talking about the French Revolution. The most important thing to know about the French Revolution is that no one survived. They had their first revolution in 17-something. They got the idea from America because America had a revolution. It was like, oh, fuck you, England. We don't want to be you anymore. And England was like, oh, but you do. We're going to teach you. And that was like the worst, horrible, most least English accent anyone's ever done. But the point stands that England was like, oh, no, you didn't. And the U.S. was like, oh, yeah, I think we just did, fuckers. And then the U.S. proceeded to kick England's butt because the English were wearing bright red with a nice white target painted on the front of the uniforms as per regulations put in place by George the Fourth, who as we all know was completely fucking loony and there was even like a movie about him and it might have been one of the other Georges but quite frankly all of them were fucking insane the only um, George who was not insane was the one who looked like Tim Curry and I think looking like Tim Curry is quite insane enough for any mortal um, so Anyway, what happened was the French were watching the Americans on TV and seeing how this revolution was going down. And they were like, do we not want to do the same thing? And um, they were like, oh, no, why, why would we? And they were like, because, because they are making us eat cake. And we do not like cake. And so they're like, oh, you're right, we fucking hate cake. Fuck cake. We're going to have a fucking revolution right the fuck now, homeboy. And so they went up to Marie Antoinette's house, and they were like, we don't want your fucking cake. And she was like, why not? It's delicious. Only she said it in German, because she didn't actually speak any French. Um, She was actually Romulan, and for some reason her babble fish that was in her ear was um, stuck to German instead of to French, which caused her a lot of problems in her adopted country after she married King Louis the whatever the fuck, um, because, uh, first of all, she was a Romulan, and that wasn't really considered to be a popular kind of an alien to be at the time. Now, if she had been a Vulcan, there would have been no problems. Everyone would have been very welcoming. Um, Probably if she'd been a Klingon, it would have been slightly worse because nobody really likes Klingons because they're Klingons and they're ugly and and they smell like turds. Because a Klingon is actually a close relative of the dingleberry. uh, they, they, They tend to stick to your anal hair and it's really not sightly or scently. So um, what happens is you get um, sh- you get a Romulan and she moved to France and she married the king and he was really only in it because she had really nice tits. I mean like I'm talking like the world's best tits. Like every people came from like all over the fucking world to look at her tits. Aboriginal Australians named um, part of their nation there were these this place in Australia that had these two hills that looked quite a bit like tits, and so they put big rocks on top of them to be the nipples, and they named them after Marie Antoinette, which really surprised the English when they showed up about a hundred years later, because they weren't even aware that the Aboriginal Australians knew that Marie Antoinette existed, but there was this gigantic monument to her tits. So, you know, just chalk that up to one of your history's mysteries. And... Yeah, it's kind of like the Easter Island statues, if the Easter Island statues were of tits. So, um... They didn't want her fucking cake. They were like, you're a fucking Romulan, and we don't like your, your fucking Romulo cakes. So they cut off her head, and then while they were at it, they cut off everybody else's head. Like, pretty much, they went down the list, and if you made over $10 a year, they cut off your head. And then they... they what? Okay. I, I've just been informed that those Easter Island statues are called Moe, and they were actually made to look like Stalin, which... Definitely another one of history's mysteries. So if you made over $10 a year, they, cho- they chopped off your head. And then they were like, so, okay, we kind of need another government because anarchy isn't really working for us. So they, they found a couple guys, and they're like, okay, you can be our new government. The problem was that the guys they chose to be their new government, and this was called the directory because they picked their names out of the phone book. Um, at random, they opened the phone book and picked the names, and so they called it the directory government, also known as the directoire if you are a faggot. And um, 
one of the things that happened as a result of the revolution, and at about this time period, was because they had chopped off everybody's heads, who made over ten bucks a month, um, there wasn't anybody still working at the fabric factories, so they couldn't make those big fancy ass dresses that used to be in style with the hips ten feet wide. So instead, everybody just went around in their undergarments, which is why a lot of the time in period artwork, you will see a woman just hanging out with her tits hanging out. And part of that, true, was because they were all very, very jealous of Marie Antoinette and constantly wanted to show off their assets. And, you know, look at my tits are just as good, and I'm also, you know, not one of those fucking rich bitches. Look at my tits, and I won't even make you eat cake. And none of the men ever complained about this. Shortly thereafter, men started wearing really, really tight pants, because the competition for these women was getting really intense, because their tits were out there all the time. So everybody was going after them. And the competition got so intense that the men started wearing these skin-tight pants so you could see their dicks, because that was the only way they had to compete, because men don't have titties. So they're out there with, you know, the dicks hanging out, and the directory, just um, the guys they got out of the phone book, what they did was they, like, okay, they wanted to have another revolution because they'd really enjoyed the first one. And so they had a party, and they got real drunk one night, and they got the phone book out. And they're like, you know what? We should totally play a game with this phone book. And so they went through the phone book, and they picked some names at random, and they started chopping people's heads off. And that was how everyone in France died. No one survived the French Revolution. Napoleon, as everyone knows, was not actually French. He was from Corsica, which is off the coast of Florida. And he came from Corsica because there was no one left in France. Bec no, it was off the coast of Florida. It wasn't at all off of Portugal. He came from Corsica, which was off the coast of Florida, because there wasn't anyone left in France to run the place. And he was like, well, goddamn, they left the whole country and they didn't even lock the door. I guess I'll take over. But England was like, shit, fuck you. You know, we've been fucking fighting these dudes since 1066. And we fucking want France. We were French. You know, the people who founded England in 1066, they were French. And so in a way, we are both English and French. And therefore, we deserve to have France. Not some kind of Floridian upstart. Fucking hell. So they sent, Napole you know, they got in a big old fucking fight. And also, I think at one point, there was like an argument that was being done using those big fucking, like, mouth trumpets, like announcers have at sports games or cheerleaders. They had these cheerleader trumpets, and they had Wellington on one side of the channel and Napoleon on the other. And Napoleon was like, Wellington, your nose is so big! And he was Mexican, because he came from Florida. And um, Wellington, on the other hand, is going, Well, you are short! And Napoleon got really pissed off, so they ended up having to get armies involved. And uh, Richard Sharp won the Napoleonic Wars. And after the Napoleonic Wars, um, Victor Hugo um, became king. And that is how we have the musical Cats. This has been your history, mystery, dinner, theater. Thank you. With Owl. Titus and Owl.